again. Thanks for clicking on to another podcast of Jiffy and Stubbsy. The background to this, uh, dual code rugby star Jonathan Davis came up with the idea of talking to people in sport that really have an opinion that it's worth listening to. This is our second series of uh, podcasts. Grateful thanks to Kerry London, one of the leading insurance companies uh, in the country for sponsoring uh, this series. And for any advice, it's good to go and talk to them. Well, Jiffy, we have had some terrific guests so far. Today is absolutely no different. He captained England uh, to Grand Slams, to a World Rugby Union World Cup final, played for the British Lions. England really emerged under this man's captaincy, and I'm delighted he's agreed uh, to join us today. Will Carling, Will, thank you for spending some time with us. Um, Will, you mentioned your Rob Andrew before. Yeah. Uh, I was looking this afternoon, uh, just looking back at the, the drop goal in the quarterfinal against Australia, I think that was. Yeah. Can you just talk me through how drop goal moments like that come about? Whether there's, you decide, because I think you want to line out, you drove forward, then eventually got it back. So... Was that decided before? I love moments like that because they're late in the game and the pressure on Jiffy, we'll come to your two drop goals in a minute late in the game, don't worry. Um, the, the pressure on whoever's going to do that, it's intense. Yeah, well, it's so I, if I remember, we, we, we won a penalty. We were just outside of 22 and we won a penalty and it was great because um, we, we were just trying to work out what we are doing and there was a guy, Dowie Morris used to play, who was the most excitable guy I've ever come across. And, and we used to call him the monkey. And he was just like, and the monkey was jabbering on about, you know, I can't remember what, and eventually you had to go, Dowie, shut up. You know, just shut up, right. And Rob and I are trying to work out. We went, yeah, we'll, we, you know, we'll go down the line. And then Dino was like, we'll drive it. Um, and, I, and I was, Dino and I were saying, so Rob, put it up, put it up just outside the 22, because we were going for penalties, right? So that was, the plan was, We'd drive the line as far as we could, then we'll put it up and we'd try and, you know, put, keep them under real pressure, get a penalty. Two-handed catch. They get the drive going. First bit's done. And Australia now won't dare to come in from the side and bring that down. Back to Rob Andrew. Well, he struck it. It's over! Unbelievable! Rob Andrew! Dino's driving. Um, Dowie's very excited. And then the, Dino would either drop the ball or something happened, you know, something went badly wrong for the English forwards to actually give it to the backs. And... Uh, and Rob, um, just before it comes, said, I'm going to go for a drop goal. And, and God, I promise you, and I went... Don't be stupid. I said, put it up, you know, in the, in the, and he went, I'm going for a drop goal. And I do remember as, you know, Dowie passed him thinking, be obedient, be, you know, he's a very good Cambridge boy. He was usually, you know, he, and, and I saw at the corner of my eyes, I went to chase it. They had gone for this drop goal. And I remember thinking, you, you know, and then it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> and, uh, and he had run back and he was standing under the post with that look of absolute, you know, and he was just looking at me and I was like, okay, uh, yeah, it's okay. It was okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was a hell of a drop goal. Um, yeah. It was from miles out, but he never, I mean, because in, in trade, he had been practicing them a few days before and he'd been absolutely shite. <laughs> yeah, but he could, I tell you what, he could drop goals because when we came to uh, Twickenham before um, the 86, he stepped back on his off his right foot and dropped the goal with his with his left foot. He's really talented. He's a great great cricketer as well. He's a tough old boy as well. Uh, Rob was, he might, was uh, I, thought, yeah, he was, wasn't he? I and mean, that's what they thought. Oh, you know, Rob's you know just this classical, but he's a he's northern lad. I tell you, he's, he's northern he's lad a tough boy. Yeah, because I, I had a few cracks on his chin a few times, and uh, <laughs> he got up he got up from him. So uh, he was he was a real good player. But I, I just feel you know it's. Um, when you're on about drop goals, it's just, it's the moment. It's the easiest way to score points, I think. You know, it's a, it's a, t it's a tough skill and not everyone can do it. But, you know, you practice as a kid and you just got to step up on the morning. If you're a couple of points behind and you're 30 yards out, it's, it's an opportunity to drop a goal. And then psychologically, 
you know, it, it it's it's tough for them to come back then because the clock is ticking away. So, and I I think it's underused at the moment. It's been funnily enough in internationals. Uh, like the autumn's coming up now. You, I don't think you see many of them, and but they are in the World Cup yeah. when it's a knockout thing. All of a sudden, you look at the World Cup. You know, Johnny Wilkinson, of course, Yanni De Boer kicked four against um, against England. Then you had Dan Carter just pushing, you know, New Zealand away from getting the momentum back from from Australia. So it, I think it's an underused, um, you know, ploy uh, because. You know, it's it's just a good skill to have, and and you can do it without you know trying to force pressure. So, um, you know, it's hopefully it'll come back. But it's all about game management. I think that's key. So I don't ask him again. Well, you know, you only you played for Harlequins and only Harlequins. You know, people are changing and going clubs everywhere and going to France. Were you ever enticed to go? You know, any anywhere else? Were you approached to go anywhere else? I was uh, when I was uh, about twenty four. I was offered a million pounds. To go and play for Leeds, rugby league, because um, yeah. they were sponsored by Carling. Um, <laughs> so it was like so, and it was one of those, you know, you're like, that's a hell of a lot of money. Um, or it was then, but I'll tell you I'm, what, I tell you what, that bumpchin wouldn't have, I wouldn't have lasted long with a million pound tag on your head, mate. <laughs> well, and Jiffy, not being funny, that's, and I was at this uh, like a rehab place, and Ellery Hanley was coming down. Um, Sean Edwards was there and I remember talking to Ellery and he said Will listen he said hey I, I've got a respect for you he said but if you ever take my advice he said don't do it he said because they will try and kill you <laughs> he said however good you are he said England captain that money they will just try and kill you um, and being the coward that I am that was the end of that was the end of the decision <laughs> it was like uh, fine and I, but actually yeah it's it sort of um I talked to a couple of French clubs towards the end, but never another English club. It's weird, isn't it? I, um, yeah, sort of Harlequins. I, I was at Durham University, and the, and the guy who was chairman of England Selectors, this was at 87, said to me, Durham University, uh, he said, Will, I want you to play club rugby for the rest of the season because I want to take you to the World Cup in 87. And I went, oh, okay, great. He said, so I want you to play for Harlequins. Yeah, Durham, Harlequins, <laughs> London. Yeah, that figures. Um so I used to get on a train three times a week to go to oh. and then and then he didn't pick me because I was too tired from all the travel. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was just great, but so I just, and I just stuck with him ever since. It's just like so, yeah. I think um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was just sometimes it was frustrating, um, but it, you know that's that's. What, what do you tell? Do you tell these stories to the the current England players, and they go, "Well, you travelled from Durham to train." Hang on, no. You actually worked as well. You worked and trained, and then you played for England, and you didn't get paid. Is well, there something wrong with you? The, the best bit was, was Big Joe Cockenathinger was um, was chatting to me before the World, World Cup, and they'd had all these training camps. And he said, "So, well, he said, um, where did you go on, on on training camps before the '95 World Cup?" I went, <laughs> "Training camps." I said, "Joe, I think we got together five days before the World Cup started," and he went, "No, no, no, no." But so before that, you know. I went, no, we were working. And there was that look of, you were, what? I said, working. <laughs> yeah, we were working. <laughs> and, uh, I know, exactly. Like, really. No, no, I really, doing, what do you mean working? And uh, it's brilliant. And they just, they're, they're, they just crack up. It just, uh, it's funny. Um, but they love hearing the stories about rucking and, and all the stuff that you, oh. you be able to do. They, you know, you can see them. And, and the fact that you didn't get sent off for punching, you just got one like, come on, guys. You know, it was that like, punching's fine, but now let's just calm down. And they're like, what? And I said, yeah, you never got sent off for a punch. You, you, you had to stamp on someone's head or gouge them. Other than that, you could do what the hell you wanted, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. Uh, it, is, it is unreal. We, we, we were using the word mentor before. Do the pair of you ever consider... In a similar situation, I don't know whether there was a similar situation. Is is there anything that you think I would have benefited from being told that then, as I went through my career? Oh, uh, I I think I I would have loved to have gone. I I think in in Asia, I had a good rugby league. You know, I I think it was it broadened my horizons, made me a better person because living in Wales is very very small and it's you know it's so it's parochial um so when i went over there it was brilliant but i think i would have loved 
uh, to have gone to play uh, for Harlequins. I think I'd have loved to have gone and, and, and played in London you know, and, and enjoyed the whole experience of that, I think. That's, and if I hadn't gone north, maybe I'd, maybe I'd have done that. So um, that's, that's what I'd have thought. But on the field, I can't... No, not really. You know, you learn by a lot of your mistakes. Um, but not really... I can't remember anything that sticks out. You know, like when Will was captain, do you remember anything that anyone ever told you at half-time or anything you ever said at half-time to anybody? Uh, I, I remember one thing. I, I think. Well, there's two. Yeah, I remember one thing I said, which um, which was awful. Um, but uh, I remember. Am I allowed to swear, Stubbsy, on this? Or are we? Yes. Not? Yes. Yeah, so, so when I was, I, I was made. You know, you're 22. You're made captain, right? And uh, I mean, this is the crazy thing when I look back on it. And uh, it's announced, and then you're basically you, you're walked into a room of 25 journalists or whatever. And I'm 22 years old. No one talks to you about media or anything right so you're like and i think three games into my captaincy we drew to scotland and a lot of the, the the media was you know was quite brutal and actually missed the point with what we were trying to do so the press conference after um sort of building up to the next game i'm sitting in this press conference and uh and they're asking questions i'm a bit quiet and one of them I remember guys chris jones still at the evening standard he goes you're a bit quiet well what's the problem i said well guys just i just be honest i said i thought some of your articles were we're off the, off the point. You, you didn't quite get what we were trying to do. And the criticism of Danley Morris was, was, was wrong and unfounded. And, and actually, I just thought, you know, um, it, it, was, it was wrong. And I, sort of, I came out with some opinions and there was just silence. And Chris said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just giving you some feedback. He said, no, Will, you, you don't criticise us. I went, <laughs> I said, you write your articles, you know, so this is a 22-year-old, you know, and I went, you write your articles that are read by millions of people and I can't give you an honest opinion here in private in this. And went, yeah, I went, well, fuck off. And got up and walked out, and, which is not great, you know, media. Um, and I never really got on a footing with the media because it just, from then on, was like, this was my dream and I, and I was very protective of the players and stuff. And I, I never played the media game. And you sort of think... And hence, you get this persona gets created. But, you know, so you think, God, I wish someone had explained how important the media is, what the role of the media is. And, and to, you know, you would have actually thought, OK, I, I get this. This is not yeah. just a, a sort of an argument. But um, in terms of half, the only thing I ever said, Jeff, at half time was against the French in Paris, the quarterfinal of the World Cup, when it was the most unbelievable, the most vicious, violent game ever yeah. played. And they, they had, uh, we were nine six up or something and it really was just one of those games where you just realized it was on a knife edge and i remember thinking you've got to try and say something will so uh i sort of said listen guys come on get in i said look whoever scores next you know it's like we score they go they'll they'll go they'll crack they'll get emotional they'll cry you know they'll, they'll be very french and i did all that so i said but so christ we you know we've got to score next three minutes later jean baptiste or Fon scores in, in the corner and so uh <laughs> standing under the post place is going absolutely nuts and, and the players are all leaning in I'm about to speak and Mike Teague is standing right next to me and people don't believe this actually happens you know and he just whispered he went another pearl of wisdom I hope skipper <laughs> with a, just a dead straight face you know and it was just one of those that's great you know and it was just like you sort of look at him and you go okay point taken and it was just uh, yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant I had one, I'd one course we were losing and we came in half time and he just came in after us and he said, uh, right boys, play better and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, on, uh, well, on uh, the, no, the rugby, it's difficult times for everybody. You know, mm. where, do you, where do you see rugby at, you know, at, at the moment? The autumn tests are coming up. It's going to be very strange. I did the game in Wembley last week, the Challenge Cup final, 90,000 people, right? Uh, capacity, not, not a soul in there, okay? Which is very, very weird. Um, and it's, I think people now appreciate how important support are, aren't they, to create, create that buzz and the atmosphere. And I think that's what you know, we, we love. That's what we miss, I suppose, international, international rugby. It's going to be a difficult month for you know, the, the autumn test for everyone. But where, where do you see rugby you know, in the ne going the next month and, and next year? I don't know. I, I think, uh, without wanting to get political, I think there's, it's, it's going to be very hard um, for players. They've got to have to generate you know, their own um, 
environment, you know, sort of their own enthusiasm, their own energy, and yeah, you know, you're yeah. never going to be able to rely on on a crowd. I think there's part of me that that I, I don't quite get the logic of of not allowing people in because it's outdoors, and uh, you know, I, I think the other bit is, you know, it it's great for people's mental health going to watch sport. It's you know, it's a, it's a distraction from I, there's there's so many good. Um, parts of sport you know and, and reasons for going to watch sport so I think that's a, that's a great shape I understand that you know um, there, there are decisions being made on this virus but I think uh, rugby I think will it, it's getting to a stage where you know there must be a lot of clubs um, who really are going to start struggling to, yeah. to survive if um, people are not allowed back soon to start watching sport in some kind of numbers and uh yeah, you know that's that's the bit where you look at they are businesses. You know it has yeah. become a business, um, and they they are being stopped uh, from from operating as a business for whatever reason. And you think they can't carry on indefinitely like that. So yeah. I'd be fascinated to know what will happen come the Six Nations um, and and club rugby. Go, you know, going through the uh, through after Christmas. Uh, yeah, and I think England. England. You know, if you look at England rugby in a really healthy state at the moment on the field. If you look, you know, you had. Um, you know, Bristol winning, you had Exeter to winning, you know, the, the um, Gallagher Premiership is, is going well, England coming uh, off the back of a, a World Cup final, so, you know, England are in a very, very strong position at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they are, and, um, you know, it's always been the case, Jiffy, just the, the sheer numbers of, of players England have always had, that, yeah, um, yeah. you know, in a sense, if, if in the 70s, that's my bit, in the, in the 70s they had great players, in the 80s they just those players were never given a chance for any, any period of time. And I think, you know, England will just, the, the sheer numbers of players that they, uh, that they produce will always have a strong team, um, or should yeah. certainly always have a strong team. And I look at some of the, the talent, you know, I watch it, some of the young guys coming into the squad now and you think, wow, I mean, it's like they, they have a depth that um, other countries can, can only dream of. And I think they are very, very lucky in, in that sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So talent-wise, very lucky. I mean, and, and financially, they've usually been very lucky, but you know that's under pressure. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I think looking at um, some of the other Six Nations countries, you know, you think it's it's going to start getting really tough soon. Yeah, it will. It will, especially if there's no Six Nations with crowds. Yeah. And is is there any progress? Have you heard about the rugby union calendar? around the world. Is there any progress on that? Because b before the pandemic, I, I was reading that it's a big issue. Has any progress been made? I have, I've heard, you know, I heard bits and pieces when they were, they were trying to, um, you know, formalise the season. That was, that was sort of thrown out. Um, yeah. And I haven't heard anything else. I think, um, you know, you look at world rugby, it, it, to a certain extent, subject, it's like, I, you're trying to work out who, who runs rugby? You know, I mean, how much power really do world rugby have? Um, yeah. Is it the unions? Um, and how much power, say, do Six Nations have? Or again, is it, you know, is it all just the, the member unions? And so therefore, who's got the vision for where yeah. rugby should go um, yeah. in, in the next five years? This is bizarrely given them a, an opportunity to really think about it. What's best for rugby? Um, it'd be a real shame if, if nothing comes out of it. I think I think we were uh, during um, you know the when when the game went professional, the Southern Hemisphere just went out. There you are, clean sheet, and they structured their season uh, and they went to kind of regions, didn't they, where they had club towns before, and that was great for them because they've kind of structured where the the emphasis then builds to play in the in the international match, and that was always going to be difficult for the Northern Hemisphere because of the different countries, the different competitions, and I think with this. You know, pandemic now. I think it illustrates how important the Six Nations is, and maybe you know, they, they, if they can ring fence the Six Nations, and then just say, right, you know, that's the cash cow for the Northern Hemisphere, then surely they can do if they want this World kind of Championship to go in November, because not the the November the autumn test hasn't got the same kind of um, intensity and appeal to the, the supporters will as the Six Nations as they. So maybe they can build around that, but it's always going to be difficult then for the club scene to, strain, to change structurally in, in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, you see, what I would love to see, which is almost like going, would seem to be going backwards is, instead of having um, three, four teams come up, you get 
Australia come up and one year they, they tour England. They play three tests and they play midweek games against the club sides. Yeah. And, you know, and then next year they tour Wales, right? And they play, you know, the regions. And so, A, Wales, England, Scotland only ever see these teams, say, every four years or whatever. It makes it different. It's a three test series. There's, there's some, you know, so hence, you know, there's some, there's some value in it. There's some, there's some interest in it. It's not just a one-off game. And you, you have a series of games. They play these midweek games so that, you know, down at Exeter, as, as a, you know, you, you, you get in the top four of the premiership, you get one of these midweek games. You imagine yeah. Australia or the All Blacks down at, down at Exeter. How great would that yeah. be? Um, it would be. So for, for, those, for the younger guys in the All Blacks squad, what an experience to actually get out there and start playing in, in, in different uh, arenas. And I think something yeah. like that would be far more interesting than just one game at Twickenham, another yeah. team at Twickenham. And you think... I think that I agree with you has just lost its um, its appeal. It's been done. We, we need something that that happens yeah. differently in November. But I think doing a almost like a, a best in the world every two years. Well, then why do we need a World Cup? Yeah, I know. But it's, they 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 want money, don't they? The Southern Hemisphere, I think, wants some money, and that's the that's the problem. So one thing before we go, Will is because yeah. Will's dad didn't he, he play for Cardiff? Didn't he do? Did didn't yeah. you have any? Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts of maybe emulating your dad and going to have a game for Cardiff for one season? Uh, well, when I was young, I, you know, I used to support Wales because uh, I think he had, he had told me that, we, that, you know, basically he played for Cardiff. So I sort of assumed that we were Welsh um, <laughs> and, uh, and then obviously realised that we weren't when he broke the news to me. But um, yeah, no, I, I would love to have, but Cardiff were never interested. You can't blame them. Really. <laughs> <laughs> never, never made any kind of approach. So uh, that yeah, they, was... they was they were sponsored by Brains, so they definitely wouldn't have got you then. <laughs> uh, guys, time has beaten us. Will, thank you so much. Is that Jackie Kennedy behind? That is yeah. fantastic. I know. No. I didn't. I didn't know who she was. Lisa chose her, obviously. Yeah. Uh, same you know, head. I... Same hairdresser coloring as well. Same hairdresser <laughs> coloring. <laughs> uh, Will, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Really enjoyed the last forty odd minutes. Uh, grateful thanks to Kerry London for sponsoring this series of Jiffy and Stubbsy. This has been a terrific 45 minutes. Thank you very much, guys. Jiffy, Will, take care, guys. See you soon. Cheers, Will. Thanks, mate. Yeah, Catch up soon. Pleasure. Ta-ra, mate. And thanks for listening to Jiffy and Stubbsy. Hope you'll join us again. Please hit the subscribe button.